I guess uh, the English term would be a uh, traitor, but in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu culture, we have a term called creonche. Creonche. I'm awful with the pronunciation. Creonche. creonche. Yes. Thank you. Can you please uh, unpackage that? And what, what does it mean in terms of BJJ culture? Um, you know, th- this might take a bit, and I'm sorry if I'm going to ramble on, but you gotcha. uh, there's got to, you know, there's got to be like a an explanation on how it com- it came about and all, how it all started. Mm-hmm. Creonche started with um, how we got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was through uh, Master Master Carlson Gracie. Um, you know, rest in peace. He passed away many years ago, and he used that word when he was talking about people leaving academies or leaving teams to go to other teams. You know, so he he used that word Creonche as a as yes as a word for traitor uh coward you know and and things like that but that actually originated that word actually originated in the brazilian soap opera in which one of the main one of the main characters was uh you know uh a very tricky you know betrayed all his friends you know very snaky kind of person and that was his character and that's and that word derived came into that into the 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 Brazilian you know language through this soap opera and through this individual, and then Carlson Gracie just kind of like used it during one of his uh, interviews when someone was interviewing him, and he's like, oh, you know, a Creonche, Creonche is a coward, a Creonche is a is a traitor, someone you know who doesn't um, who's not loyal, and and that's you know how that that whole thing started. And it became a big part of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu culture because, unfortunately, there's been a history that happens more often than we'd like where there's a lot of uh, people leaving one team to go for another team. Uh, There's been breakups in teams where, you know, half of the team goes off and starts their own team. Uh, and, And that kind of happens more often than we'd like, uh, even more as recent as the beginning of the year where the Mendes kids left uh, the Atos team to start their own thing. So th- this this happens uh, quite often. And it could be for several different reasons. And I'm going to play both sides of the coin a little bit um, as far as like, you know, what how I feel about the word and and uh, how maybe you can understand it coming from both sides. So I'm not trying to take sides. I'm trying to exp- see it from both points of view. Um, I, I don't really like, uh, in over the years, I've been in same situations where, yes, you know, students have left me to go to other teams. And yes, I was originally, I was into this word Creonchi and saying, you know, they left and they're traitors and, but as you grow up and you mature and you start to understand the world a little bit more and, and you start to see things from a different perspective, you, you start to see things a little bit differently. And it's not so black and white. You know what I mean? It's not so black and white. I think that each case is an individual case. And it sometimes it's for good reasons. Sometimes it's for bad reasons. But ultimately, what it comes down is this word loyalty, Right. You know, loyal to a professor, loyal to a team, loyal to teammates. And uh, the more and more I look at it, the more and more, the more I dislike this word loyalty. Because uh, sometimes it's expected too much as in like blind loyalty. And I think that's where it becomes a problem. You know, you can't expect people to be blindly loyal to you just because you're some, you know, authority figure yeah authority figure would you know where you're master or professor and you have a big team and you it's automatically because of who you are and your rank you you, it's expected that you get loyalty and i I don't think i don't i don't like that um blind loyalty idea the word that i would like to use more if it's trust Mm. you know what i mean Trust is the proper word. I think trust needs to be built between professors and students. Um, and that trust can be broken sometimes 
but trust is important because it's two ways, right? I need to trust you. You need to trust me. And then we go from there. Um, so it, it can be challenging at times. Now, this is where it gets complicated sometimes. People, there are individuals that are selfish, right? And there are individuals that are always looking for their own best interest at all times. These individuals are who I have a problem with because they're going to jump ship from team to team to team and they don't, they don't build that trust or they don't build those relationships because they only want what's best for them. And they're going to go to wherever they feel is going to give them what they're looking for, right? And that sometimes could be a selfish thing. Sometimes it could just be a, a, a goal-driven thing where if I want to be the best in the world and the place that I'm in now is not giving me the tools and the, and the things that I, that I need, then I'm going to go to a team that does provide me with those tools. And again, you can't blame the person from, for doing that, but it comes down to the individual's personality. If you do it the right way by explaining and having an open relationship and a trust, trustworthy relationship with a, with a professor and a coach and say, listen, I'm sorry, professor. I like you. I like the team. I like the guys. But I, I have a feeling that if staying here, I'm never going to reach my ultimate goal. So I need to go over here. Right. And the professor should understand. Like uh, a lot of the times you have to. What I realize is that. I can't hate those people for doing that or those students for doing that. I'm If I'm not providing them with what they need, I can't expect them to be blindly loyal to me and stay. You know, so there's also a responsibility on the professors uh, and the team leaders to provide their students with what they need. So if they're leaving, first, you need to look in the mirror first. Like, okay, what did, <laughs> what did I do? What did I do wrong? What am I not doing? What am I not providing? What can I change to make things better? How can I improve so people are not going to leave? Right? Because you can't just expect people to stay because they like you. you know, there's plenty of guys that like me and I have good relationships, but they went to other teams. Because maybe I wasn't providing the right environment of what they were looking for. Right? There's also the case where people just change teams because or leave because of circumstances. They get a different job. They move away, right? They go to different places, so they have no choice. They got to go train somewhere else. Maybe there's no affiliate in the region that's from the same team. So you got to go and join another team. So that's got to be understandable, and you got to be okay. There's people that leave affili affiliations and associations to join other associations. So I'm an academy owner. I'm not happy with my current affiliation. They're not providing me with what I would with, with I need and what I require. I can't be blindly loyal to that. So I'm going to go to another team that I feel is, you know, has a better trustworthy and a better, um, you know, basically providing what I'm, what I'm looking for, you know, and that, again, that causes problems because there's, it comes down to time invested and people are, you know, a, attached to that, right? If I, it hurts even to, for me, even like I have some good relationships with a lot of students that went to other teams or went to other academies, whether it's because they're looking for better training or because of circumstances of scheduling or they moved or whatever, these things happen. But what hurts a little bit, what stings for me, first of all, I don't call them crayonch. I don't call them traders. I don't, I don't believe in that word anymore. I don't use that word anymore. <laughs> I just feel like, man, I've invested some time and I'm, a, I'm an invest, like I, I, I'm a very committed professor. So that time, that investment of time, that, that uh, exchange of knowledge, my giving it my all in every class and teaching to the best of my abilities. And if these, these individuals have some success and then they go on somewhere else and continue to have that success, that stings a little bit. It stings because what? Why does it sting? Because the 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 other team now is getting the credit for their the person's wins and medals and success. But initially, they kind of started with me, and I had a I had an input in that. So it stings a little bit because it's almost selfish too. Like professors were selfish as well. It's all about ego, right? My ego is like, man, I. 
I put all this work and someone else is getting the credit. I want my team and myself to get the credit, right? So that kind of fuels some fire, right? But it's just emotions. It's just egos. And most problems happen because of two things, ego or money, right? And that's why there's sometimes people leave. Sometimes it's, it's just you, you, you're not on the same page with that person. You're not like you, your visions are not the same. Or there's been plenty of times where academies leave associations for other associations because of money, right? Financially, it didn't make sense for them to stay with who they were. You know what I mean? So it, it it's easy to throw that word around, but I think it comes from a negative uh, point and a selfish kind of point of view where you didn't get your way. So you're going to point the finger, right? And you're going to, you know, cause, accuse someone of such uh, of things. But at the same time, there are people like that, though. There are people that come in, take advantage of the professor, take advantage of the teammates, take advantage of whatever they can. And then when it doesn't suit them anymore, suit, suit them anymore, they move on. And they go and abuse somewhere else, right? So there's good and bad in this world. We, we know this, right? But you can't lump everyone that does this into the same category and say, oh, you're all crayonches, you're all traders. No, each situation is is different for different reasons and it's way more complicated than that. You know what I mean? So I, I try not to use this word too much. I try not to, actually, no, I don't use the word crayonche at all, period. Um, I try not to get into this loyalty thing too much or I expect my students to be loyal. No, I expect my students to trust me and to trust my work and to trust what I'm doing. And that's more important to me to build a friendship and to build a trust. If they want to be loyal, great, amazing, stick around. If they want to move on to someone, something else, great, go on. I would rather have an open relationship. And if they explain to me why, the reasons why, that's basically all I want. You know, explain to me why. And if your reason makes sense, if your reasonings are reasonable, then I'm like, hey, best of luck, man. Door is always open. Mm-hmm.